You know, we think and we try to get around the power of love. You ever do that? Because we don't want to get hurt, usually. So we come up with all kinds of antics and strange, funny things, silly things that we do, ultimately, to try to stop that flow, that overwhelming flow. But you can't. You can't. Because it's an ever flowing, unstoppable sound. <laughs> The amazing things we plan. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> In the Bhagavad Gita, it says, to love, to love is to know me. To love is to know me, capital M. My innermost nature. To love is to know me, my innermost nature, the truth that I am. You know, when you see it on a lot of our affirmations, it says, I am in capital letters. And some of you may not know, that's to remind us of the I am, the truth of who we are, the spirit that we are, the divinity that we are, the unstoppable love, the one power that we are, that one force in the universe that we are all a part of, all of our beautiful diversity. You know, I just keep thinking about the explosion of population in the world. And I know in some ways we're concerned about that in many ways because of the impact on the earth. But if you think about it in terms of I've come here to love, I've come here to be the unstoppable force of divine love. I've been ordained to come onto this earth to be that, to embody that, to speak that, to, to be, that, be that in all the actions I take and all the projects I take on and all the interactions I have. If we have come here to really be that love, which I think we have come here to be that love, to be that unstoppable love, of, that force of love, then that explosion of diversity population is more opportunities for us to love, more ways for us to create bridges across what we deem as differences to that one heart, to that one truth, to that one essence, that one spirit that we all share. That's who we are, the I am, all of us. And that's where we draw our power from. So when we try to shut the doors, when we try to close the doors on love, when we, you know, it's just as if you were to close the doors here and there was a big flood of watery love coming to us. If there was a big flood coming and you open the doors, then the flood can come through, right? If you close them, it might wash up against it and come back. And so when we close off to love, that's what we do. We can't stop the flow. The flow will keep going. It'll just go where there's an open door, where there's an open window. And so if we keep our own hearts and our own minds open, then that love will come to us and through us, and it will arise from us and come through us and out into the world. And that's the way it's meant to be. Like the law of circulation we talk about in prosperity, it's the exact same thing when we talk about financial good, financial freedom, give as you receive and when we receive we also give we're in that flow it's the same thing with love and so it's the call for us to stay in that that ever-present flow of love that gift of love you know in the most amazing times and places the most tragic situations is when love can be felt most palpably you know how that happens. And that's a time when humanity unites in ways and overcomes differences when there's disasters or war or horrific things that happen. You know, many years ago in the 1300s, actually, um, the medieval bridge, Ponte Vecchio in Florence, is this beautiful bridge. And on it, there was this beautiful woman, Beatrice. And there was a man named Dante, you might know him. He wrote the Divine Comedy and lots of other poetry and prose. And he became, you know, very famous. But it was because he stood at Ponte Vecchio and saw Beatrice on that bridge. And he said he had this vision when he saw this woman. And it was a vision of all eternity. And all of that creative work came from that. Because in that moment, he loved like he had never loved before. And he only got to have a couple conversations with Beatrice before she died of the plague. But she became his lifelong muse. She became the image of divine love for him, the image of that goddess kind of love that poured through him and gave to the world all that creativity that moved so many hearts in so many ways. And it was 650 years later 
that Jack Kornfield tells this story where World War II was going on and the American soldiers were chasing the German soldiers up the Italian peninsula. And they were, the Germans were blowing up everything in their wake, you notice, to, to stop the, the Americans, including every bridge. But then they radioed the American soldiers and they said, we don't want to blow up Ponte Vecchio. Will you promise not to cross it? <laughs> and the Americans said yes, and they kept their promise. Not a soldier crossed Ponte Vecchio, not a piece of equipment, because Dante stood at the edge of it and saw love and created all that love from there. It's that power of love, that one power that pierces the unbelievable, the things that we think could never happen. Oh no, what soldiers would ever agree to that? I mean, that's the enemy. That's how they're trained, right? But no, because love is more powerful than that. The heart is more powerful than that. The unstoppable flow of the divine cannot be stopped, much as we may try. It cannot be stopped. If you think you are missing love, it's because you're, you're not allowing the unstoppable flow to come through you and to you. That's all. That's it. That's the only miss. That's the only absence. Martin Luther King Jr. said of war and of racism that I believe that the unarmored truth and unconditional love will have the final word. Don't you believe that too? That unarmored truth, that unarmored heart, that unarmored self, that one who opens themselves fully to love and gives as unconditionally as possible will have the final word on all of our isms, on all of our war, on all of our divisiveness, on all of our issues that we say, you are the other and I am over here us and them and us and them and we continue to play this chess game of us and them and you name it next week it's going to be black glasses you know or or I, yellow dresses or you know god knows what ridiculousness we will come up with to create these kind of antics that stop that flow but it can't be stopped that's the good news. The good news is it can't be stopped. It's ever flowing. It's always coming through us and as us in every breath we take, in every heartbeat we make, all around the world, all of life, beaming and teeming with this one power of love. Cannot be stopped. I remember when I was a little girl, I'd have those feelings for the first time that you have when you love somebody and it just suddenly comes up, you know, and it sort of washes over you. You ever have that and you feel like you're kind of just taken over by love in that moment and you love this thing or this person or this animal so much you feel like your, your heart's going to explode? Anybody ever feel that way? Yeah, certainly if you've ever fallen in love or risen in love, you've felt in that way at times, you know? And so there's that, that feeling, and I remember that feeling. I would feel it for, you know, and it just came upon me. It'd be like all of a sudden I'd be thinking about my sister, and I'd have this, like, gush of love. And it was like, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> you know? And, and then I think I'd, I'd have the same thing for my father, or my other, you know, just everybody in my family, sometimes for, for my dog or for animals. And, and it was so um, beautiful and, and powerful, but it was also a little scary. I'd always have that thought that followed, like, oh, what if something happens to them? What if they die? Oh, Lord, then what, you know? And then we have that close, right? Ooh, <laughs> I better not love too much, you know, because it might hurt. And that's what we want to overcome that fear. We don't even need to overcome it. All we have to do is say, I'm going to be brave. You know, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to open that gate. I'm going to open that door. And I'm going to be who I've come to be, this courageous embodiment of love. Isn't that what we've all come to for? I, when I was writing this talk on Friday, I had some Dove chocolates left from the board retreat. <laughs> Good to know there was some left. <laughs> and they have a promise in them, you know, so you unwrap sort of like a fortune cookie and it has some little saying in it. And it said, don't stop until you're proud. 
And I was not thinking of it in terms of pride, like egoic pride, but like don't stop till you feel complete. And I didn't think of it as just writing this talk, but don't stop loving until you feel complete. That's a lifetime of work, isn't it? It's unstoppable work to say, I'm going to keep loving and I'm going to love some more and I'm going to open my heart some more and I'm not going to close the doors and I'm going to just keep them open as much as I can keep them open and maybe today it's just this much, you know? And maybe next week it'll be this wide, who knows? But if we just keep working at that and keep allowing ourselves to be bold in our love, then that unstoppable flow. And what happens when we do that? that? That love, who wants to close down that feeling, that surprising feeling of being awash in love, to feel like you're in love, like you're in love all the time, you know? I remember my um, friend Mary Lacaye when we were getting together in ministerial school and she was in the class behind me and so she was inter everybody was introducing themselves and Mary just was so caught up in the love and the feeling and she's so pure and childlike in a way with her love and she said, I'm in love with all of you already. And it was so genuine, you know, you could feel it. It was just like a child who was like, I love everyone and I love everything and I'm so happy to be here. And I, you know, and it's that kind of feeling like there's just, I love all of life, you know, and it's those moments that we miss if we shut, if we try to shut the unstoppable flow of love, but of course it can't be stopped. It will just go elsewhere for a while. It will find a place and it will find a place in us. It's like when we wound ourselves, you know, we wound. It's like, what happens? It's this miraculous thing, right? It, it starts to heal up and then it scabs over. And then before you know it, you can't even tell that you ever had a wound. Isn't that miraculous? Isn't that incredible? That's love. That's the unstoppable essence of love. That's what heals the world. That's what heals us in every way, mentally and physically and emotionally in every way. And it's, it can't be stopped. You know, that impulse to heal that wound cannot be stopped. Now, we can pick away at the scabs, and we can wound ourselves again, and we can create a bigger wound for love to heal, but love will not stop healing because it just keeps coming, and it keeps coming, and it keeps coming. So why don't, why don't just jump on the bandwagon and get in it, right? Let's just get in the flow of it. Because that's a way to live in which we feel alive, right? That's the way we live when we feel on purpose. And it's not about like some, you know, necessarily like some, sometimes I think when we say our divine purpose, people go, oh yeah, that divine purpose thing. Do you ever feel that way? Like, ah, I don't know exactly what my divine purpose is. I'm not really sure I've ever figured it out. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. You're here to love. That's your divine purpose. That's it. End of story. It's that simple. That's it, and it can be so simple. I've been practicing love at Safeway. <laughs> and I have to tell you, it's been fabulous. <laughs> so I was there in the um, produce department. Second time I've seen this woman who works there, her name's Flower. Anybody know Flower? See, a bunch of people know her. And you know why they know her? Because she is so friendly. I think she's the friendliest person I have ever met. So there I was with my cart, and I hear Flower again, greeting her customers by name, asking about their families. And I stopped, and I thought, you know, I'm not going to just sit here and think how lovely she is. I'm going to tell her how lovely she is. And I said, Flower, you are the most friendly person I think I have ever met, and you make me want to shop here more often. And her, you know her group, her posse of customers was standing around and their flower bloomed right in front of us, you know? <laughs> and it like gave me so much, you know, beside whatever it gave out, it gave me so much to feel that as well. So this week I was there again and I was getting coffee at Starbucks and there was a young man who was apparently new, I couldn't tell, he seemed very competent, but he was self-conscious, and so he said, I'm so sorry, it's only my second day. And I said, oh, you're doing a fantastic job. He gave me like the warmest, biggest, sweetest smile. So I was like, gosh, I want more of that, right? <laughs> so we're just kind of chatting, he says, do you play Monopoly? Because you know, they have that Monopoly thing. 
And I said, well, no, but I like the box game. I haven't played in a long time. He goes, oh, I love Monopoly. Well, I didn't even know he would know. He's this young guy, you know. And he says, yeah, I loved a while away an afternoon with my kids. And I said, well, how old are your kids? He said, nine and 17. And then he just gave me that big, warm, bright smile again. And it was, I don't know if it's because I asked about his kids or because he just thought of them, but it didn't matter because my whole heart was just like filled with love and connection. You know, it's like, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. I think a lot of times we stop from the expression because of all of our silly antics, because we're afraid we're going to be rejected or it won't land or somebody will, you know, I don't know what we're afraid of, really. It's so silly, isn't it? It really is so silly. It's like whatever we're afraid of, like get over it because the unstoppable, you know, flow of love is here. <laughs> And so just let ourselves just be the, the human being we've come to be. You know, that, that the human being we've come to be is so beautiful. It's so, it's so precious, the human life, you know? And so to connect with each other in that way alone is amazing. And then to top it off with an understanding of the divinity that is pouring through us is just like mind-blowing. And our opportunity to be that every day, to get up every day alive and like, what do you got for me today, God, to be the, in the unstoppable flow of love? How can I show up and be you in the world and be your expression? And it doesn't have to be something high and mighty. It can be something at Safeway <laughs> or wherever you go. It can be on the road or with your coworkers. I brought some childlike Valentines today, and I hope you'll fill some of those out and give them to each other or give them to people throughout the week. I picked ones that I thought you might like, like puns and superheroes and <laughs> things like that. But they're on the uh, connections table. So please freely use those and, and, and just bring some of that childlike pure love to the people that you meet along the way or to people that you already know and love or people here that maybe reach out to somebody new that you haven't really you know, ex expressed any love with yet and just give them the valentine. It's pretty simple stuff, really. It's things we learned in kindergarten, literally, because having Grace, who's in kindergarten, come home and sing the songs she sings and tell me about the things she learned, it's like, oh, yeah, lessons in love. You know, that's what we all need to learn over and over again, right? So one of the things that happens is this, this love and loss thing, right? This is where we kind of get tripped up, I think, is in the loss. I know this woman whose husband made his transition 10 years ago, and she continuously posts on Facebook these love letters to him, which, you know, initially was lovely. And, I, and I'm not trying to... I just see where she's, she's um, giving over to the absence, you know? It's like, it's like the marriage she had, the, the man she had. There's so much energy put into sort of worshiping what was, what's missing, what's no longer there. It's like the absence has become like a, a form of worship. Did anybody ever relate to this or see this in your life? And so it's like, you know, I, I don't think that he'd want that for her. I think he'd want her to be alive and here and fully present and loving what is around her. Because the truth is their love between each other can never be stopped. It can never be stopped. People that we care about that have moved on, when we grieve, that's what we're doing is loving them, loving what was between us and allowing it to continue. You know, that fear that I had of my siblings and my parents dying, you know, when I would have that feeling of being awash in love when I was a kid, and that fearful thought that would follow, what will I do when they die? Well, it happened. My dad died when I was 29. He made his transition suddenly. And I went through all those stages of shock and denial and, you know, grieved the loss of him, but he's here with me always, you know? I can call upon him any time and feel his presence. When I say and do things, he would have said and done, he's there. When I wear one of his old t-shirts, he's there. When I think of him, he's there. If I wanna, actually he loved roses, so when I just like look at the roses, like, oh yeah, I remember, and dad really liked the salmon ones, which were a little bit lighter than that, and you know, it's just like he's here. If I want him to be here, he's, but I don't have to like, make a test, like a, an altar to him that keeps the absence alive. 
You see the difference? It's like a pining versus a loving. It's like instead of letting the love flow, it sort of stops or it can't stop the flow, but it sort of gets us out of it because it gets us out of what is here and now and present to flow in us and through us and as us. So we know for ourselves when it's time to, to kind of move from that deep grief of, of, of love, you know, of, of just loving the person and let it just be a continuation of loving the person without it being a worship of the missing and the absence of that person or that relationship that ended. You know, sometimes we're challenged to love, right? When we're in those places where we're having differences of opinion or we feel hurt or we're afraid we're going to be hurt, you know? And I, I remember, like, once when I was talking about my sister, or um, Brenly's sister to her, and I was being kind of critical, and she said, just love her. And then later I had the opportunity to say the same about my sister. And I was like, you know, just love her, right? <laughs> And I remember once when my sister and brother-in-law, my other sister and brother-in-law, were having trouble in their marriage, and, and his mother, my brother-in-law's mother, reached over to my sister, we were at a party, and put her hand on, on my sister's leg, and she said, just love him. You know, and it was just like you could feel, like you can feel how that just like melts, right? It melts all of our stuff about being right, or being validated, or being la 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 la. All that stuff we get in, right? It's not worth it. So wherever you find yourself with those bumpy spots, just, if you can just, ah, oh, breathe for a moment and say, oh, just love them. Love myself. By the way, there's a Valentine. Love your selfie, Valentine. <laughs> So don't forget that one and give, give yourself a valentine. <laughs> Love is a lot like the ocean, you know, for me it is anyway. When I spend time at the ocean, it's like, it's like spending time with God, you know, in this sort of embodied way, you know. And how the, how the ocean, the ocean keeps coming and she keeps kissing the earth, you know. It's like over and over go, over and over she's hugging and kissing the earth. Sometimes it's gentle and sometimes it's fierce, you know, but there's that constant rhythm of love, 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 love. And it comes from the depths of the ocean, those dark places that we can't even see, those, you know, that mystery. It's like the divine mystery. And that's sort of how this unstoppable flow of love, it pulls up from that divine mystery from wherever out into the ethers or deep inside of us in the dark places we can't even imagine, the recesses of where that mystery lives. And, and it's of love and it's made of love and it's our essence. And out of that comes this expression over and over and over again. And don't be afraid that there'll be some kind of like drying up of the love. If you give too much love that there won't be enough because it's like that law of circulation. It just keeps getting replenished, right? And if you do in fact find yourself feeling tired or feeling over giving, then you just drop in and you get quiet and you feel the source all again replenishing you. And the love just rushes through you again and fills you up and spills over, pressed down, shaking together, spilling over, poured into your lap. Or so it is said in Luke chapter 6. Milan said to Annette, my friend, on her second date, I will always love you. I will love you with everything I have. Whether you love me or not, whether this relationship goes anywhere, I will always love you. Second date. <laughs> That's pretty courageous, isn't it? But beautiful and true and authentic and honest. And so she's sort of like my heroine. Like I'm going to think about that every so often and think wherever I'm stopping or, or hesitating, like, oh, no, just right through it, you know? I'm going to speak it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to share it. And I hope you will, too. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're unity, bonded in love. One power, one presence. The all-loving presence of God, everywhere present, in our hearts, in our minds, in every cell of our bodies. It will heal whatever needs to be healed, just like those little boo-boos you get. Whatever comes your way, whatever comes your family's way, 
the doctors may make it sound horrific and it may sound really dark, and it, but just know there is an unstoppable flow of love that is meant to heal whatever needs to be healed at whatever level it needs to be healed. And we trust it and don't stop it. Don't try to get in the way. It can't be stopped. So we might as well receive it and allow it and express it and be it. Give over to it, you know? Remember Kate Wolf's song, Give Yourself to Love. If love is what you're after. Give yourself to love. Give over to love. Surrender to love. Open the doors of your heart and let love be. Let it become. Let it allow, allow it to be. Allow it to be God made visible, like the Bhagavad Gita said. Allow it to be that essence, that I am, that truth in the world that it is meant to be, that we are meant to be, the embodiment of. Rise up in love. Get over the petty stuff. We don't have time for it. There's no time for that. We are the ones that we've been waiting for to, to raise up the consciousness of this planet, to bring forth the love that is here, to feel, to be. And it starts with each of us individually. So my greatest wish for all of us is that we will have the courage to be the love that we've come to be, that we've been asked to be, to know that it is not a flow that can be stopped. I am in the flow of unstoppable love. Are you in the flow of unstoppable love? Let's say it together, let's know it, let's feel it, let's be it. I am in the flow of unstoppable love. And so it is. Love is my decision it's up to me give of my heart to give of my heart love is my decision no one else no one else can tell me to start can tell me to start once I decide, and once I decide to change my mind, to change my mind, God will show me how, God will show me how. Love is my decision, my decision right here and now. My decision right here and now.